Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, your one-stop shop for everything motor caravan. Whether it's new van and site reviews or friendly technical advice, you've come to the right place. It's autumn time, so what does that mean for us motor caravanners? New season models, so what's coming up in tonight's show? In this week's show, I check out the all-new Benamar Maleo 301, a Spanish invader we welcome with open arms. But first, I set the sat-nav to hull to have a look at the new super-affordable Autocruise Select 144. Now, what would you say if I told you that last season's Autocruise Accent was available for an £11,390 reduction going forward into the 2017 season? Well, I'm not making that up. It is, in fact, exactly that, a fact. The new Autocruise Select 144 replaces the Accent and is part of a bold new strategy from Swift to open up the van conversions market to more buyers. Yes, the vehicle behind me can be had for £36,000 on the road. So let's see exactly what you get for your money. The Select 144 is a rear lounge two berth van conversion based on the Fiat Ducato. It has a two litre engine producing 115 bhp. As I alluded to earlier, the specification is fairly basic. So in the cab, don't go looking for air conditioning or a passenger airbag because you won't find them. If you want that, then you have to specify the driver's pack. What you do get, however, is an MP3 player and a radio, which is a very pleasing touch. And elsewhere in this dinette area, you can see the Graceland soft furnishings all very pleasing, but another option is available further up the packs. What you do get though, and this is across the whole range, is Swift's excellent command control panel, which you can connect through the interface and control it from there, or via a phone or tablet over GSM or Bluetooth. Now, what more could you need in a compact motorhome like this? The kitchen certainly covers all the basics. You have a sink here with a lift up tap, and next to that, under this cover, two gas burners. There's also a 50 litre compressor fridge. There's no grill, but you can have one as part of the luxury pack, which pops into the worktop just under here. And I've also noticed that there's a plug point in the wardrobe, so you could connect a microwave if you're that way inclined. Now where to eat, you do have options in this van. A folding leaf table up there above the cab can be used in this position. Open the sliding door to enjoy some panoramic vistas. Alternatively, go to the rear of the van and pop the table in the rear lounge, open the barn doors, and hey, you're almost eating al fresco. Now the washroom is certainly compact here on the offside, but you don't really want for much else. You have a mirror, a swivel loo, and a shower that comes out of the basin's mixer tap. And there's also a shower curtain on a U-shaped rail, so no worries about contacting the wallboard with spray. Now thanks to its parallel seating configuration, the rear lounge is a sociable space. As everyone knows, we just love a rear lounge here in the UK. Now the headroom is slightly constrained due to the fact that the floor has been built up for storage. You can lay long flat items down here, which is quite a good compromise, I reckon. You've also got the barn doors, so you can exit here. You don't have to actually stoop down to get back into the van. Now storage is possible under the seat boxes. The gas only Truma Combi boiler is here. There's some storage here and under here. All pretty good. Up above, there's a roof light to let some illumination in. You can have further illumination by having a window in one of the barn doors. Only one comes as standard. Now, as seen, the Auto Cruise Select 144 really does cost £36,000 on the road. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? Obviously, you get somewhere to eat, somewhere to sleep, plumbing, heating, lighting, and most importantly, something to drive, a decent base vehicle. Now, the specification, if it's a little bit too basic for some, you could add a couple of packs. You could put the driver's pack on, and then maybe you could put the living pack. We don't know how much these packs are going to be, but the guess is maybe up to a couple of thousand pounds each. Either way, if you did choose to do that, you'd still be coming in maybe just under 40,000 pounds which for a van with all this kit and caboodle on it and a rear lounge panel van conversion that will be very agreeable for many years of happy touring. That sounds like a pretty good offer. Picturesque Barn Farm campsite is located in the heart of the Peak District in Derbyshire. Three miles west of Matlock and seven miles south of Bakewell, the site is close to a good selection of local attractions. 
A welcoming site with a wide range of facilities, Barn Farm is perfectly placed for enjoying the surrounding countryside. Walkers are particularly well catered for at Barn Farm. The site is located close to four major peak district paths. After a long day exploring, it's reassuring to know that you can take advantage of the on-site sauna or top up your tan on a sunbed. This is in addition to other facilities including a games room with TV, plus a children's play area for keeping the little ones occupied. The site's farm store stocks the essentials for your stay, but you don't have to fend for yourself all the time. The Butty Box Catering Service visits during the touring season and serves breakfast, fish and chips and more. Visitors to Barn Farm rate the site highly, with particular praise for the friendly and helpful owners. Others commented on the clean toilets and showers, the convenient shop and the site's well-kept look and feel. Few people who stay at Barn Farm fail to mention the amazing views out onto the scenic countryside. Little wonder the Peak District was one of the first national parks to be created in Britain, but you don't have to spend all your time drinking in the scenery. Nearby Matlock Bath is home to the Gulliver's Kingdom Children's Attraction, a great day out for all the family, and it offers access to the Heights of Abraham Country Park and Show Caverns via a cable car. More down-to-earth attractions close to Barn Farm include Derbyshire Wildlife's Whistle Stop Centre and the Peak District Lead Mining Museum. Stately home fanciers will find much to enjoy too, with Haddon Hall and the world-famous Chatsworth House close by. Welcome to Barn Farm. We are a camping caravan site based in the heart of the Peak National Park. Um, we range from caravans, camping and sole catering accommodation. Um, we're open from April through to the end of October. Uh, we do get very busy during the summer months so it is advisable to book. The facilities that we have at Barn Farm range from toilets and showers which are open seven days a week, 24 hours. We also have a shop on site selling equipment for caravans, equipment for camping and also sweets and things for the kids. If the weather is bad like it is today, you've got a number of things that you can do on site. You've got the games room for the children to play in. You also have a sauna to go and warm up in. But you've also got down at Matlock Bath, the Heights of Abraham, which has got the caves, which obviously keeps you out of this weather. But if you bring your wellies and your boots, you can obviously brave it and go and have some walks out in the Peak District. This is our third year at Barn Farm. We store our caravan here and we absolutely love it because Mark and Jans do the best they can to make it a really pleasurable holiday and the views are stunning. And you like it? I've made tons of friends here and it, it's absolutely amazing place and there's tons of woods and forests to have fun at. Hello there, you've caught me doing the daily chores. We're used to having water on tap at home and we're also used nowadays to having water on tap in the motorhome. Nice and convenient. The big difference is, in a motorhome we have to store the water in a tank. It's not, we can't have a connected pipe feeding water to our van, so we have to store it. Things can happen in the water system that aren't so pleasant. We get microbial bugs growing and breeding and they can be a bit unpleasant to us. So we need to periodically clean and sterilise the system to get rid of those. One of the easiest ways to do it is to use acetic acid or citric acid. Citric acid is simple lemon juice, acetic acid is vinegar, not harmful to us, but they are both mild sterilising agents. They also will clean out limescale. Limescale is alkali, so to clear it we need an acid. A mild acid, vinegar or lemon juice. Simply put a dose of it into the tank, fill the tank with water. It's not a bad idea to drive the vehicle around to give it a thorough mix up. And then after a while, run the taps, run the water off. You may get a bit of a vinegary smell for a little while, 
but at least it's not harmful to us. And it will clean the system. It will, if you run it through the boiler, it will clean the scale out of the boiler and then drain down. It's important not to use chlorine-based cleaners, bleach, or products that are designed for sterilising babies, feeding bottles, things like that. They very often have bleach in them, and the bleach, the chlorine, can affect stainless steel. It can actually eat into stainless steel, so it can harm boilers and it can harm the sink. So that's pretty much all we need to do there. Some water tanks have an access port on them, so you can get in and physically clean them. I've got a tank outside, let's go and have a look at it. So this is a typical water tank, small but perfectly serviceable. It has an access port on the top where we can remove that and we can get inside and physically clean around the inside of the tank. I use a simple scouring pad, just give it a wipe around, make sure you get into all the corners and nooks and crannies, just to remove any microbial buildups that are in there, or mould, give it a good wipe out. There will be some residual water in the bottom when you start, so you can use some blue towel to mop that out first. When you've finished cleaning it round with the scourer, a fresh piece of blue paper and dry it round just to remove anything that's been disturbed and mop it all out. And that's about all there is to it. When you put the lid back on, make sure that it seals nice and tight and then you won't have water sloshing around while you're driving. I hope you found this helpful. See you next time. Behind me is the Benamar Maleo 301, a four berth version of the 201 that we reviewed a couple of series ago. Now this is a couple's van with some added flexibility. You can take the grandchildren away or perhaps even your own children. The choice is yours. There are four belted travel seats to go with the four berths, so you don't just have to have nighttime guests. There have been many improvements for Benamar's for the 2017 season, so let's have a look at some of these, starting on the outside. Now the biggest news is the adoption of new Euro 6 engines for the Fiat Ducato. These meet the latest emission standards using exhaust gas recirculation technology rather than selective catalytic reduction. Now what does all that mean? Don't ask me. Now joking aside, it's the difference between using AdBlue or not. Fiat's decision not to use AdBlue frees you up for two things you may have to consider. One, you don't have to worry about retopping your reservoir of AdBlue, and two, you're not taking a nibble from your user payload by not having it. Very good work, Fiat. Another refinement concerns the LED daytime running lights, which look very good indeed. And also, this natty black surround for the grill here, which is mirrored underneath by a little kicker plate alongside the front of the van. But there's more. Check out these new alloys. They look very sharp. In fact, I'd go a little bit further and say they're really rather good. Now the other feature, perhaps the standout one that explains Benamar's massive success since coming back to the UK, is that this continentally produced motorhome has a habitation door on the UK near side. And this means that you don't have to disgorge your passengers from the living area into the road when you pull up at the side of the road. Now the Maleo 301 is just 5.99 metres long, so yes, it's very friendly. It has to pack a lot in on its body length and it certainly does this in the lounge. So we have two rotated driver's seats and two travel seats here with the L-shaped seating configuration and a table that moves fully around. Just pull it towards me and I can extend it and then push it where it needs to go in two directions so you can take it anywhere you need it at all. Now these soft furnishings are new for 2017. They have this rather fetching red stripe in them which is mirrored by the scatter cushions in the donette. Now this is another reason why Benamar is popular with British buyers. It has this contemporary styling. It's very clean, some would say reminiscent of a boutique hotel and it's certainly very different to a lot of what else is on the market. Now this near side galley isn't the biggest in the world, but there's still a decent amount of preparation space, especially when the lid on the cooker and the sinks are down. Talking about the cooker, it's a dual fuel unit, so you have a hot plate alongside two gas burners, 
perfect if your gas is running a bit low. Underneath that, you'll find a combination oven and grill. Now the sink has a little drainer that attaches into it, and under this surface here, we have a dual fuel fridge with a removable freezer compartment. Very good indeed. Up above, a microwave. Slightly too high for my liking, but I'm not really sure where else they could have put it. And let's look at the storage units. There's a soft close action, so very satisfying indeed. And above that, another little quirk of Benamar's is this little racking rail at the front here. So you can take out everyday objects that you need to get access to and leave them on top of your cupboards. Another good design touch. <laughs> Now, on a van this length, you have to have a multifunction washroom, but don't worry, you get everything you need and a few other things too. The decor is spot on, matching the rest of the van. Double drain holes in the shower, perfect if you haven't leveled the van properly the night before. A brand new version of Tetford's Lou for this season to make you feel like royalty when you're sitting on the throne. And also an all round surround shower curtain so you'll never get any spray on the wood. Which brings us on to the sleeping arrangements. Now, as I mentioned, there's a Luton at the front of the van, which means a rather large double bed over the driver's cab. Two meters by 1.55 meters in this case. But it's not the only double bed in this motorhome. At the rear of the vehicle, there's a transverse double, which again measures two meters long. So very respectable length for all you tall people. Now it has two bed heights, the lower one, which is set to at the moment, and a higher one for when you're in transit. Now accessing the bed at its lower height is very easy because Benamar has considerately put some folding steps at the back of the vehicle. You just drop them down and shimmy up. Very easy. Now I mentioned the two bed heights. There's a very good reason for that obviously is that the higher position when you're on the road, you can use the improved headroom to store tall items in the garage. When you get back on the site, you can just drop the bed down. Now here's how it works. This is the lower position being raised up. Now the other advantage of this method, of course, is that it uses the upper body version of Shanks's pony. Imagine if you had an electrically operated version, but your leisure battery had run out. You wouldn't be able to drop the bed at all. Now with all these storage locations to choose from, you'd be expecting the Benamar Maleo 301 to have a pretty decent user payload. And you won't be disappointed. It's 550 kilograms as standard that you can bump up to 700 kilograms if you upplate free of charge to the 3,650 kilogram chassis. Bear in mind, you need to have C1 entitlement on your driving license to be able to do that. Well, all in all, this is a cracking couples van with the added flexibility of being able to transport and sleep two extra people if required. If you don't want to do that, of course, then when you're pitched up, you could use the overcab for extra storage. And what's not to like about that? Another thing not to dislike at all is the price. Just over 49,000 pounds on the road. Very good value for money in my opinion. Not for nothing did Benamar sell 5% of all new motorhomes in the UK last season. And there's nothing to suspect that they won't increase that number for 2017. This, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please, is the Auto Sleeper Broadway. And it certainly looks the part, but it's on the inside where you'll find most of the magic. EK in the name stands for End Kitchen, of course, as you can see. Many manufacturers offer this kind of floor plan in motorhomes, but Auto Sleeper's take on it is a fairly distinctive one. There's a high level of specification, excellent fit and finish, and a real attention to detail that comes for servicing the upper end of the market for many years. A good example of this is the dual fuel cooker, one electric hot plate and three gas burners. Useful if the gas is running low and you're hooked up to main supply, of course. If you have loads of gas on board, however, then you have a separate oven and grill for maximum controllability. Next to that, we have an oblong sink with one very interesting feature, a little draining board built into the base. Very good indeed. Underneath that, we have four drawers, a cubby, another drawer, and another cubby. Plenty of storage solutions, and there's also some overhead lockers above the kitchen here, and also an extractor fan to rid the van of smells quicker than you can create them. 
Now, not all of the kitchen is arranged on the rear wall of the motorhome. There's another little section here, starting with a fridge with separate freezer compartment, which has automatic energy selection. So whichever kind of power you're rocking, it will select it for you. Very good touch indeed. And up above that, look where it's mounted. A very sensibly positioned microwave oven. Not too high, just right, and very safe to use too. Well done, auto sleepers. And underneath that, the company's signature thing, cut glass crystal glasses. So you can toast your good fortune in owning an auto sleeper motorhome while you're on the road. Up above that, more storage options. There's an overhead locker here, but this one, is interesting because it has racking for crockery and also another couple of glass holders, plus racking for a couple of bottles on the other side. Is there something about the Bon Viveur that this particular brand is catering for? Now, this clever all-in-one washroom actually comes in two parts. There's a shower compartment on the rear wall and next to that, a vanity unit. But hang on a minute, you say, there doesn't look to be much space to have a shower. The solution is simple. You just pull forward on the vanity unit and this swinging wall comes around like that. You then add one half of a bifold door to create a space, which means that no water can contact the wood surfaces above the loo. The Broadway EK is a four berth, full travel seat motorhome. The two extra travel seats are here in the Donette. Now this whole area is extremely sociable and that's why the full Donette configuration really works so well. Large windows on either side of the van, also up above, coming in through the roof. Plenty of natural light flooding in. Now this area also converts into a rather large king-size bed. To do that, you remove the folding leaf table from the dinette back to where it lives in the wardrobe. You pull the sliding seat bases into their respective gangways and rearrange the cushions. You'll have it done in a couple of minutes and it's a massive and very comfortable bed. But if at the end of a very hard day relaxing on the beach, it's all too much, then there's a further double bed up in the overcab. And finally, because not everyone that goes touring is romantically linked, you can also make the lounge up into two single beds. The Auto Sleeper Broadway EK is based on the Peugeot Boxer with a 2.2 litre engine producing 150 bhp, so it's going to be very sprightly on the road. It's 3,500 kilograms with a 419 kilogram payload, in case you were wondering. Now, this test van is fitted with the premium pack, which adds a few extra goodies like cruise control cab air conditioning and a colour reversing camera for starters. It also has the winter pack which has a little bit of insulation plus these concertina cab blinds. Another option in this van of course are the travel seats in the rear which cost a thousand pounds extra so all told this van will cost you £60,495 on the road. Now the payload is fairly generous at just over 400 kilograms but the storage option provision will really favour those who don't take a huge amount of outdoor leisure paraphernalia with them on the road. There's nowhere to put a canoe, a bike or a surfboard for example. But what this van does cater for though are couples after the essence of touring, the freedom of the open road and to be able to come and go as you please in luxury, style and refinement. Sure they're not giving it away at just over £60,000 but you've worked hard so why not treat yourself. Sadly that's all we've got time for on this week's show. Next time we'll be looking at some more top sites and vans including the family friendly tribute T726. In the meantime you can keep in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter or our website. Until next time then, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.